Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NinjaTrader webinar room. My name is Micah, and I would like to welcome you all to today's NinjaTrader 8 Order Entry 101 event. Before we begin, I would like to test audio and video, so if you can hear my voice and see the projection on your screen, please enter a Y into the room now. All right, thanks, everybody. Sounds like I'm coming through. All right, so before we begin, um, I want to get this uh, disclaimer out of the way. It is important to understand that there are substantial risks in trading commodity futures and or foreign currency. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you and it will depend on your specific circumstances in financial resources. It is possible to lose all the funds deposited with your broker and you could even incur losses beyond these amounts. Please inquire at brokerage support at ninjatrader.com for more information or for a copy of the CFTC full risk disclosure. Also, please remember that these training webinars are not a solicitation nor a recommendation, but are simply educational in nature. Excellent. So in today's presentation, we are going to understand the different order types. We're going to add a superdome to the workspace and, and place some trades using that. We're also going to enable chart trader on a chart and place trades using that method. And uh, the beginning of the presentation today, we're going to manage some trades using the basic entry window. All right. We have tons of new features in NinjaTrader 8. We've added over 500 user-driven enhancements, which include charting, our new alert system, new features in the Superdome window, a modernized user interface, and more. <clears throat> uh, NinjaTrader is a free application for advanced charting, market analytics, automated strategy development, and trade simulation. We only charge for our product if and when you decide to trade live on the NinjaTrader platform. If you'd like to learn more, please click on the links I've provided in the information box below my display, and I'll get those in there. Uh, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook for exclusive market commentary, updates on contract expirations, roll dates, and more. Additionally, the NinjaTrader blog is your home for all things NinjaTrader and can be found at ninjatrader.com forward slash blog. All right, excellent. So I'm going to switch over to my screen sharing screen here so you can see my Ninja Trader. Um, looks like I'm going to have to redo it real quick. Just give me a moment here. All right. Oops. Okay, uh, so everyone should be able to see my. Um, Ninja Trader 8 Control Center, uh, sort of the left-hand half of the screen here. If, if for any reason you don't see that, please let me know in the chat. All right, so we have our Ninja Trader um, Control Center here. The first thing I'm going to do is connect to uh, the simulated data feed. The simulated data feed provides internally generated market data and is not reflective of the actual market. This connection is ideal for training and becoming familiar with the Ninja Trader application. The trend slider control will, will appear once you're connected to the simulated data feed. And if you left click on the slider and move it up and down, that will result in the simulated prices moving in that direction. So I'm going to go ahead and click connections, select simulated data feed. And I'm going to bring on over that the trend slider. This, uh, little, this little thing that pops up when you're connected to the simulated data feed is the trend slider. And uh, like I said, if you if you left click and drag it up or down, this is it's like the volume control. You can move the prices up or move the prices down. Right in the middle, they'll kind of stay even keel, a little bit choppy. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is open up a basic entry window. So I'm going to go to New and select the top option, which is which is basic entry. All right, and I'll bring that on over into view. Okay, <clears throat> bear with me just a moment. All right. The basic entry window is a low precision order entry method with no visual component and is therefore not ideal for limit or stop orders. Additionally, you can add uh, tabs to the basic entry window as well as several other windows in NinjaTrader 8. Um, if you can see my mouse down here, I'm going to click the plus button. You can add tabs similarly to uh, like an internet browser with multiple tabs. For now, I'm just going to be working with the one tab. Okay, so first thing I need to do is select an instrument. So I'm going to uh, click in my instrument field here and simply type ES09-17, hit enter, 
And this is simulated data for the E-mini S&P September 2017 contract. Again, this is completely fake data, just so you know. Don't, uh, don't try to compare it to uh, an actual chart because it's likely not going to match. Um, and like I said, if I crank the prices up or down with this trend slider, um, it will make the, the, the prices move in that direction. All right, and so now we can see uh, the, the data populating. Uh, up in the top of the basic entry window, we have what's known as the order grid. In the middle, we have what's called position and level one. So you can see the ask, bid, and last data. That's level one data, as well as, um, and if we had a position, it would be reflected. Currently, it says flat, which means we don't have a position. Uh, entry will show the entry price that you paid if you're in a position, and then where it says P&L will actually display your live P&L um, when you're in a position. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this top, uh, sorry, type drop-down box. And this is where you select the different order types. So we have limit, market, MIT, stop limit, and stop market for our choices here. By the way, MIT stands for market if touched. And I'll be going into what all of these orders are in just a few moments here. But uh, for now, I just wanna get going on the, the basic entry window. Uh, we have our uh, limit and stop fields here. You notice when I have limit selected, I can edit the limit field. Um, I can also type in here. Um, but the stop field is completely grayed out and blank. Uh, likewise, if I select stop market, the limit field becomes grayed out, but the stop field is then editable. And if I select stop limit, I have to fill out both of these fields. Uh, market, I would have to, I would fill out neither of those fields. That's because the uh, market order doesn't require you providing any price information. It's just going to give you the best price possible. And same with, uh, actually, market if touched works similarly to a stop order because of the, the level, the price level. Okay. Um, we also have our uh, time and force selector. This TIF stands for time and force, and our options are day. GTC, which is good till canceled, and GTD, which is good until a specified date. For this presentation, I'm going to be using the day. And a quantity selector, in this case, this refers to quantity of futures contracts we're buying or selling. All right, I'm going to go over these action buttons briefly before I start demonstrating some actual trades. This BE will move your stop loss orders to break even. No, we have buy ask sell ask this is these are limit orders to buy at or sell at the current ask price similarly buy or sell market again limit orders to uh, buy or sell at the current market price um, that's just the market order and buy or sell bid these are not limit orders by the way sorry these are market orders buy or sell bid these are limit orders to buy at the bid or at, uh, current bid price Reverse will reverse your position and uh, initi initiate a position in the opposite direction of the same quantity. Close will close your position out, and buy or sell per pertains to whatever type of order you select down here. All right, so I'm going to start by simply placing a market order. I'm going to uh, se select quantity of one. We have our ES917 instrument, and I'm simply going to press buy market. Now I get an order confirmation here. I'm going to go ahead and disable these for the remainder of the presentation so they don't pop up every time I place an order. But before I uh, before I click yes here, I'd like to draw your attention to the state column of the of the control center here. And this is where you'll see your uh, the state of of your orders um, appear. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes. Great. Um, so you saw a quick flash of orange there before um, my order was filled, and now in the basic entry window, you can see a one in a green rectangle. This tells us we're in a, a long position, that's the green part, and the quantity is one. Uh, this, this box here displays uh, the average entry, entry price, since we only bought once. This is the, the price we paid for it, 2366.75. Below that is my P&L displayed in points. All right, so... Um, I will also want to go over to the different uh, state colors you'll see in the state column for uh, the different um, states of orders. So if you see yellow in that field, uh, it means the order is initialized, the order is prepared, there's a trigger pending, or the order is waiting to be sent out. If you see orange, that means the order has been submitted, there's been a change submitted, a cancel pending, 
or an order or update has been sent to the connectivity provider. If you see blue appear in that field, it means the order has been accepted and uh, confirmed by your broker. If you see green, that means the order is in a working state and is, it has uh, received a confirmation from the exchange. And all other states, including filled, will be displayed as clear, like you see this one here. And I'm going to go ahead and paste a, a helpful link into the chat in case you want to check it out. Kind of goes over what I um, what I just did, but in a little more detail. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep placing some orders here. Um, it's currently in a, I'm in a contract of one. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm in a position of one contract long, and I paid twenty three sixty six seventy five for it. Since I'm already down on the position, let's go ahead and demonstrate what a stop uh, a stop loss order would look like. So I'm going to select here uh, in my type. I'm going to select stop market, and I'm going to make my stop price. Uh, let's see where we're at currently. Twenty three sixty four twenty five. I'll make it just below that. Twenty three sixty three fifty, and I'm going to click sell. So now I'm going to actually use my trend slider and move the market down in price. And as soon as um, 23.63.50, as soon as that price level is reached, it's going to um, release a, a market order to sell my one contract. And we've got a couple more ticks to go, and we'll be there. One more tick. Great. So that order filled. We stopped out uh, for a loss in that case. Um, but let's do another demonstration where we go long and set a profit target. So I'm going to go ahead and click the buy market button again. So now we're in the market long at 2363.75. Next thing I'm going to do is in my top on my type drop down menu, I'm going to select limit. Now since we we, we paid 2363.75, I'm going to put my profit target up here at uh, let's see 2365.50 and click sell. So now we have an order pending up here uh, 2365.50. Um, so I need to go ahead and crank my trend slider up in order to reach that price level. And, and we're out. So that in that case, we, we uh, placed a limit order for a profit target, and we ended up, um, that was a winning trade for us. Okay, next up, uh, I'm going to start instead of clicking buy or sell market to get into a position, we'll use a, uh, a limit order to get into the position. This time on the buy side, um, so limit orders must be placed be below the current market value. So we're at 2366.25. I'll go down to 2365 and click buy. Again, I'm gonna move the, market, the trend slider down to bring the price level to my limit price, which was 2365. Two more ticks to go, and we will be in a position long. Okay, great. So now we're uh, one contract long. I'd like to now demonstrate the reverse button. And uh, keep your eyes on the um, orders tab here of the control center, because you'll see actually two orders appear. The first is going to close me out of my long position. So it's going to be a sell order of one contract. And the next is going to be a short sell order of one contract as well. So when this is all said and done, we're going to see instead of a, a one in a green rectangle, we're going to see a one in a red rectangle, indicating that we're in a short position. And there we go. So now we're actually, two orders were placed very quickly, and now we're in a, a, con, a position of one contract short. Um, so in this case, a, we can either do a stop loss in the form of a stop, a stop order, or a profit target in the form of a limit order. Um, so we're pretty much break even on the trade. So let's, in this case, let's let's make it a stop order. Um, so in that case, if the market moved against us, which is in this case up, we're going to stop out. So we're currently at 2365.50. I'm going to set a stop limit order this time. My stop price being. You'll go, yeah, 2366.75, and my limit offset, I'll make it 2367.25, and we'll go ahead and click buy. And then I'm going to move the market up to reflect that.
probably should have set that stop price a little bit lower, but we're getting closer here. We have about a full point to go. Three more ticks now. Two. Sometimes the trend sliders, there we go. And we're out for a loss that time. All right, so again, um, I've demonstrated now all the different types of orders. Actually, I didn't demonstrate MIT, so I'll go ahead and demonstrate that one for you real quick. Again, when MIT is selected, it's similar to a stop order. So in this case, we'll go long. And I'm going to put the price at 23.68 and click buy. Oh, it filled right away. So those are more like limit orders. I'm going to go ahead and close the position and do a better demonstration for you. Um, so MIT orders, although you fill out the stop price, they're actually, they behave like limit orders. So on the buy side, you have to be below the current price. So in this case, we'll go down to 23.67. 2366 even and click buy. And then we'll bring our trend slider down to meet that price. Great. And I'm going to go ahead and close it out. I am going to introduce a quiz into the room now, but I want to give you a quick refresher. So if uh, if stop limit is selected, we have to fill out both the limit and the stop fields. If stop market is selected, the limit field is, is grayed out, but the stop field is editable. And uh, if the limit if limit order is selected, the limit field is editable, but not the stop field. So uh, with that in mind, here is the quiz. When placing a limit order in the basic entry window, what values must be specified before being able to place the order? Great, I see some answers coming in. Um, it is a single answer is the correct answer in this case. That helps whoever put all of the above. Um, okay. Most of you got it right. In this case, the, the correct answer is limit price. Um, I'll go ahead and close this for everybody so you can see again. And um, so we, we when we select limit, the limit price must be filled out, but the stop price is irrelevant. So that's how that goes. Okay. Um, so now we're going to go over the different order types. Uh, I'll be I'll be displaying short definitions, and I'll go over each order type in a little more depth than what's displayed. First up, we have market orders. A market order is the most basic type of trade order. It instructs the broker to buy or sell at the best price that is currently available. Typically, this type of order is executed immediately. The, the advantage to using a market order is that the trader is guaranteed to fill the trade. If a trader absolutely needs to get in or out of a trade, a market order is the most reliable order type. The disadvantage is that market orders do not guarantee price, they do not allow any precision in order entry, and that can lead to costly slippage. Or in other words, a large difference between the price the trader expected and the price where a trade is actually filled. Using market orders only in markets with good liquidity can help avoid slippage. In fast-moving markets, slippage can be the difference between a winning or losing trade. Next up, we have limit orders. A limit order is an order to buy or sell at a specific price or better. A buy limit order can only be executed at the limit price or lower, and a sell limit order can only be executed at the limit price or higher. Unlike a market order where a trader can simply press buy when the market average is at a desired price, the trader must specify a price when using a limit order. While a limit order prevents negative slippage, it does not guarantee a fill. A limit order will only be filled. Oops. A limit order will only be filled if the price reaches the specified limit price and a trading opportunity could be missed if a price moves away from the limit price before it can be filled. Please note the market can move to the limit price and the order may still not get filled if there is not enough volume, depending on the trade direction at that particular price level. 
All right. Next up, stop market order, otherwise known as a stop order. Uh, stop market order is an order to buy or sell once the order reaches a specified price known as the stop price. When the stop price is reached or surpassed, a stop order becomes a market order. This ensures a greater probability of achieving a trade at a predetermined entry or exit price, limiting investors' losses and locking in their profits. Next up, a uh, stop limit order is similar to a stop market order, except when the stop price is met or surpassed, a limit order is issued a predefined number of ticks away from the initial stop price. This combines the features of a stop order with those of a limit order. And last but not least, we have MIT or market if touched orders. Uh, an MIT order is a conditional order that becomes a market order when the security reaches a specified price. If your brokerage technology supports MIT orders, the order will be located on your broker's servers. Otherwise, they will be locally simulated by NinjaTrader. All right, so that covers our primary order types. Next, we're going to be placing some trades in the Superdome. Uh, keep in mind, traders will need a three-button mouse to place some kinds of trades uh, in the Superdome window. Let's so go back to my platform here. I'm going to go to New, select Superdome, and I'll bring that on over. All right, the Superdome provides complete functionality for the management of orders, positions, and discretionary exit and stop strategies in a highly visual and efficient manner. Everything we're doing will work with the static Superdome as well, but for this presentation, we will be using the dynamic Superdome. Also, uh, you might wonder why it's called the Superdome. Um, this, uh, not really sure about the Super, but the DOM, the Dome, that stands for Depth of Market. So it is a, a good way of viewing the depth of the market um, while being able to place trades. So let me go ahead and demonstrate what that means by selecting an instrument. We're going to select our ES917 instrument here. By the way, when you uh, once you uh, select an instrument, when you click the instrument drop-down menu, your six most recently used instruments will appear. Currently, uh, we just selected one, the ES917. We can also pin that using this TAC uh, icon here. So I click it, it'll turn down, and that means it's pinned and um, we'll stay at the top of that list there. Okay, so within the Superdome itself, there are basically um, obviously three columns here at the top. On the left-hand side, we have the buy column. In the middle, we have the price column. And on the, uh, the right-hand side, we have the sell column. Uh, you'll notice that there is a a cell highlighted in yellow and it kind of flickers back and forth up and down here. Um, the, the yellow price is the last traded price. The green price is the ask price and the blue price is the bid price. Uh, the blue doesn't contrast so well off the black background but uh, so if it's difficult to see this is where the blue price is and it is the bid price. The uh, way I remember it is you know, the yellow price is the last price because it flickers between the other two, um, either the bid or the ask. Uh, the ask price is always higher than the bid price, so that's always on top. And um, the, the bid price below is in blue. All right. Also, NinjaTrader features a context-sensitive help menu. So if you uh, get stuck anywhere using the platform or need some additional clar clarification, you can just press the F1 key. And in this case, I pressed F1 um, after working with the Superdome a little bit. So it brought up uh, the section of the help guide on the Superdome. So pretty helpful if you're ever stuck and just need a quick answer or some, some information. All right, so I'm going to start placing some orders here in the Superdome. Um, we do have uh, market buttons here. This is buy market since it's at the bottom of the buy column, and this is sell market because it's at the bottom of the sell column. This C here is um, the center. This is the close button. This closes all positions and orders. Uh, this is the reverse button, which we're familiar with. We have our instrument selector, time and force, uh, quantity, and the rest of this stuff we're not going to be getting into. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just click market on the buy side. So that's going to be a buy market order. This time I'll, I'll set my quantity to two. And click market. Great. So now I'm long two contracts. We can tell that because it's a green rectangle with a two in it. We also see that on the basic entry window. 
because the same instrument is selected. Uh, additionally, now that we're in a position, you see this brown or tan cell here at 2316. That's what we paid. Oh, I didn't realize I had my market turned all the way down. Um, that's okay. So now we're down slightly on the position, and um, 2316 is what we paid. And uh, oh, the PL is displayed right here. Again, it's displayed in points currently. Well, since we're already down on this position, I guess we'll demonstrate um, a stop order down here. So let's say it continued to go down a bit more and um, we ended up closing. We wanted to not let it go anywhere past 23.13.50. So I'm actually going to hold the control key down on my keyboard and press my middle mouse button. And I just placed a stop market order of two contracts. Um, now I'm going to keep the market moving down slightly, but uh, I was also want to demonstrate how you can move these orders around. You can click once to select it, and then click again to place it. Again, I click once and click click again. So it's a two-click process. After you click once, uh, your your mouse pointer will turn into this uh, finger pointing icon, and then uh, when you when you click it a second time, it goes back to a regular cursor. So in this case, I'm going to move it right up to the market and we stopped out. Okay, next up, let's do, since we did a long, let's do a short. Uh, this time I'm gonna place an order above market, um, a limit order to sell. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start moving the market up slightly. But I'm gonna left click once in this cell here. And this is a sell limit order up here at 23.14. 25. So I'm going to move the market up slightly to get there, but I'm also going to move this order down closer to the market price. And once it fills, we're going to be, which it just did, we're in a, a now a position of two contracts short. Now in this case, we'll let it we'll let it continue go down to go down, and we'll set a profit target in the form of a of a limit order down here. So I'm going to go ahead and left click here. Oh, it filled right away. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So, and in this case, I needed to set a profit target um, on on the buy side since I was going short. So uh, this time I'm going to set my quantities. Now I'm I'm four contracts short. So now I'll set my quantity to four, and we're going to select a limit order down here on the buy side. So I do this all the time, and it's it's just important to remember, you know, what direction you are in your market. Um, because I literally, instead of closing my position, I doubled it. Um, and then this can happen. So um, always be mindful of what direction you're going in, whether you need to be buying or selling to close your position. Um, and we're almost out now. And we hit our profit target. Luckily, it was a profitable trade. Of course, it's all in simulation anyway. But, um, you know, that could... It's always good to be mindful of what direction you are in and get and, and to definitely practice with the Superdome, um, get a hang of how the orders are placed. Um, Brandon asked a question. He said, can you see all of this on the chart? And that's, uh, that's a great question, Brandon. And yeah, I'm about to get into that section of the presentation, actually. Uh, we'll be going over Chart Trader in just a, just a little bit here. And yeah, we'll definitely be able to see positions on the chart. You won't be able to see the level two depth that we're seeing here in the Superdome, but um, you can always have a Superdome right next to your chart and kind of have all you know, best of both worlds. So we're, we're getting there. Good question, though. Um, so I've done the one. I haven't done a stop limit order yet. So let's go ahead and do a stop limit order. Let's do it on the long side above the market price. This time I'm just going to middle mouse click up here on the buy side. And then it's going to prompt me for my stop limit offset. I'll set it to two ticks and click the check mark. So now I have a stop limit order, and I'm going to go ahead and move the market up a little bit. And we're almost filled here. I'm going to get it a little closer. Okay, and the order is filled, and we're long. And I'm going to leave the leave this position on for a second. We did get another question. Alan asks, not he's not sure what I mean by level two depth. So uh, level two is basically data that is provided. Um, which gives you a little indication of where how the orders are stacking up. 
So what you're seeing on this buy side, uh, let's take this 48, for example, next to 23, 12, 50. That's saying that there's a total of 48 contracts uh, in the form of limit orders waiting for this price. They want these 48 people, you can say, want to buy at this price. And on the sell side, we'll take this 33, for example, that 33 um, contracts are waiting to be sold at 23.15 even. So that's what level two is. Um, there's, it's definitely kind of a, um, a complicated topic. So you might do some research on level two in general um, and what level two data is, but it's basically market depth. And, and in other words, looking a little bit further as not just what the last price was, but you know who, where the orders are. Um, so that's, that's about as much as I can go into detail um, about that. But if you wanted to send us an email at platform support ninjatrader.com, we can send you some more educational materials regarding level two. But um, I would just do some research on maybe level two and uh, how, how it pertains to, to trading and especially day trading. All right, so now we're in a we're still in a contract of four long. I'm actually going to use my close button here to close this out. And um, now I'm going to enter a couple more quizzes into the room. This one asks, what does the green price row on the Superdome ladder indicate? All right, we got some answers coming in. Thanks everybody for participating. It looks like most everybody got it right. Just know that, uh, I'll give you a hint here, the ask price is always higher than the bid price. Because ask is what people are looking to sell at and bid is what people are looking to buy at. I'm sorry, I got that backwards. Ask is what people are asking um, and therefore those are what the buyers are paying and bid is what sellers are paying. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. In this case, the answer is to the ask price. And again, I'll show you on the Superdome itself. Um, the green price is above the blue price, so it's the ask price. Um, that's just how it works. All right, next quiz I have is not not going to be graded. It is how are, how are we doing? Should we speed up, slow down, or keep this pace? Great. Okay, good. So I got some answers in. Nobody's begging me to slow down. So I will keep, pretty much keep at this pace. Uh, I know one person wants me to speed up, but um, looks like the majority is, is happy with the pace I'm going. So um, probably keep it going the way we have. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate that feedback. Okay, so now, Brandon, pay attention. This is your section here. Um, we're going to open up a chart. And I'm going to select. This is my data series window. I'm going to select my ES, my pinned ES instrument. Uh, one other thing I'm going to do is set my um, executions to do not plot, and that'll just keep it a little bit cleaner. Otherwise, we'll see all the trades we placed. I'm going to go ahead and click OK here, and here is our chart. I did leave the trend slider down for a while, so you'll see that big down section there. Uh, and I'll make it a little bit bigger so it fills the chart. Here's our chart. I'm just kind of getting it a little prettier. And I'll give the market a little boost to help balance out the chart. Okay. So now we have a chart here, but I don't see any way of placing orders in this chart. Uh, if I right click, uh, I don't see any kind of order entry stuff there. Um, I don't see any buttons for buy or sell, anything like that. And that is because we don't yet have chart trader enabled. Um, so I need to enable chart trader. There's a couple ways of doing it. Um, if you hover over the icons, it goes over what they mean or what what where they'll take you to. Um, this let's see one, two, three, four, fifth one from the right is chart trader. And if you click it once and then click the middle option of chart trader, it will open up a chart trader panel. And now we have some order entry options. Additionally, if you right click in in the chart itself and select properties. Uh, you do have an option here for chart trader 
um, chart trader in this uh, same three options. I'll go ahead and click cancel that. But now we have some options for placing orders. We have our action buttons, buy market, sell market, buy ask, sell ask, buy bid, sell bid, reverse and close. <clears throat> we have our time and force selector, our quantity selector, and our instrument selector actually uh, is not um, editable. That's because it's it's determined by whatever the instrument up here in the top right, uh, top left hand corner of the chart is. Um, so I'll go ahead and start with a real simple order. Um, I'm going to keep the market moving up for a little bit. So I'm going to click buy market. And now we can see our position on the chart itself. Uh, we can see also in a green rectangle indicating we're in one contract long and our current P&L. And so um, Chart Trader makes it really visual for people who love charts where their orders lie in comparison to where the current price is. Um, so let's um, let's say this is this is going to be a profitable trade for us because I'm going to keep the market moving up. I'm going to place a limit order for our profit target. So I'm actually going to right click in the chart here and I get some options. I get th this little section here is sell limit, sell MIT, buy stop market or buy stop limit. In this case, I'm selecting sell limit. And that's my profit target. So currently the market uh, would have to move all the way up here in order for that order to fill. Uh, but you can also click and click to move them similar to how we did it in the Supernome. So left click once to select it. And now um, I'm just hovering, I'm just moving my mouse, not dragging, I'm not holding the button down. And I'm going to click again down here to place it. So it's a click and click method, very similar to moving orders in the Superdome. So I'm going to put it just above where the market is and let it fill um, just the way it is. And I'll give the market a little bit of a boost because it wants to just wait there. Great. Okay, so now we're out. So that was an example of uh, a long order with a limit profit target. So now let's um, let's do another long one. This time I'm going to place a limit order below market. So I'm going to right click and select buy limit. And I'm going to move it just, just below current market price. And I'm going to trend the market down just slightly. And once this price level of 23.18 is reached, um, we will be one contract long again. Great. So now we're in a contract long. I'm actually going to keep the market moving up now. Um, here's what I'll do. Yeah, I'll do another sell limit up here. And we're just going to get out relatively quickly. I just wanted to be sure I covered limit orders in their entirety. Okay, great. Now we're out. All right. So I'm going to scrunch this up a little bit. Now I'm going to place uh, a short order. So I'm going to select this time um, sell limit up here so if the order if this uh, price level reaches this limit order we're going to be in a short position of one contract and Alan asked me to show uh, stop losses absolutely Alan let's we're actually going to do that right now so uh, good question and it's good timing um, all right, so once this order fills, okay, great. So now we're short one contract, and but the market is continuing to move up and against us since we wanted to move down in a short position. So let's set a stop loss order to protect us here uh, in case it just flies to infinity. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to select um, buy stop market. And so this is a stop order. If the market reaches this price, we're going to buy to cover and uh, close our short position. Uh, I'm going to actually keep the market chugging up here and move this stop order a little closer so we don't have to wait for it. And then, Alan, I'll give an example of this on the long side as well. And I'll use a stop limit instead of a stop market for that one.
one more tick here and we should stop out. Great, so we're now stopped out. This time we're gonna go long. I'm just gonna click buy market. So we're in a long position. Um, and again, I'm gonna keep the market moving up just for a moment, but I am gonna set a stop loss down here. Um, this time I'm gonna say sell stop limit. And it's going to prompt me for my stop limit offset. This time I'll select three ticks and click OK. Um, so now we thought we thought we were in a profitable position, but um, then the market just took a nosedive. But we're protected, and um, maybe some bad news come out, and you don't want to be in the position any longer. You don't even want to let it run run down to 23.15.75. We're going to click and click to move it a little closer to where we're at. And a few more ticks and we will be out. I'm going to move it a little closer yet. Since the trend slider doesn't really want to work with me today. Great. And now we're out. And so basically I've, I've demonstrated everything except an MIT order now. So let's go ahead and demonstrate those. They're very similar to limit orders. So we're going to select buy MIT down here. And uh, again, it's very similar to a limit order. It's just called an MIT order, and um, really you can only use them if your brokerage, uh, if your broker supports them. And this, uh, the filling of this order will result in us being one contract on the long side. And I'm just baffled at how the trend slider is not working for me today. Okay, great. So now we're one contract long. And um, I'm going to add an indicator to a chart. And I want to show you one additional thing that you can do in uh, Chart Trader that's really cool. Um, so kind of got ahead of myself. I right click in the chart and I select indicators. And from the list of available indicators in the top left hand section, I'm going to scroll until I find EMA or exponential moving average. I'm going to leave the uh, all the parameters the same. I am going to make the line a little bit more visible by just making it uh, three pixels wide. Click OK, and there is our um, our EMA. So we're in a position here, and let's say I want to sell this uh, one contract long when the price crosses down on the EMA. So what I'm going to do is put a um, a sell stop market order way down here. And then I'm going to right click the order itself, I'll hover over this section, uh, hover over all this until I see attached to indicator. And then I'm going to click properties. And this is going to list all the indicators on your chart. Uh, we only have one in this case, uh, which is our EMA. And so I'm going to click OK here. And what it's going to do, it's going to attach this sell stop order to the EMA. So whatever price is calculated, by that indicator, which is currently 232607, that's where that sell stop order is gonna reside. So we'll go ahead and click OK and watch the order jump up here. Okay, so now that sell stop order is attached to the EMA. So as the EMA recalculates, it's going to move to whatever the EMA is set at. So I'm gonna start trending the price down. And this may take a little while here, but um, it's, it's a cool example to watch, so it's, it's kind of worth it. Um, so the price is going to slowly start moving down, and as soon as it crosses this EMA price level, which is 2327 currently, it will change probably. Um, as soon as that crosses down on the EMA, it will be out. And so a lot of people use indicators for signals and important levels, so that's um, a good way to incorporate that to your actual orders. And then I'm going to go do a quick refresher in our last quiz and then open it up for Q&A. Almost now.
Okay, great. So we closed out. Um, so I'm going to go back to my chart here. I'm going to kind of center up the uh, current current price, which is indicated by this black marker. I didn't mention that earlier. The black marker that's current, you know, moving around the most. That's the current price, the last price. Um, if you right click above the last price, which I'll do over here, um, we get the options of sell limit, sell MIT, buy stop market, buy stop limit. And if I right click below the current price, I get the opposite options. I get buy limit, buy MIT, sell stop market, sell stop limit. I know I went through, through that pretty quick and it, it does take some time to absorb it all, but basically it's sell on top and buy on the bottom when I click above the current price. And when I right click below the current price, it's buy on top and sell on the bottom uh, for the bottom two types of orders. If you have NinjaTrader open on your side, I definitely encourage you to uh, use it to your advantage and, uh, and, and, and help you answering this next quiz. I'm going to go ahead and introduce that quiz into the room now. The question asks us, right clicking above the last traded price while chart trader is enabled will give you what options for the possible order types? Keep in mind this is a uh, multiple right answers are, uh, on this one. So uh, again, take your time. If you have NinjaTrader there as a tool, it will definitely be helpful. If not, it's going to be kind of a challenge. And we did get a question. Um, someone asked, what EMA is this one? Uh, let's take a look here. I'm going to right click in my chart here and select indicators and it is the exponential moving average with a period of 14 plotted over a 30 second interval. So uh, that's what you're seeing there, if that helps. Okay, so we got some answers coming in. I can tell that some people are kind of maybe not so sure what's going on and that's fine like I said if you don't have ninja trader right in front of you with your chart trader options it's pretty much going to be impossible to remember um, so I'll go ahead and stop the poll but in this in this case it was kind of a trick question all four of these answers are right so um, hopefully somebody got all four right it's hard for me to tell on this side um, so I'm going to right click above the last traded price and I get sell limit, sell MIT, buy stop market, and buy stop limit. And if I left, uh, right click below the last traded price, I get buy limit, buy MIT, sell stop market, sell stop limit. Might sound like I'm saying the exact same thing to you, but it, it's actually opposite. So um, it, it's a little confusing. It helps to, uh, again, practice and kind of become more familiarized with this um, and how it works. So uh, now I'd like, I have just a few minutes left. I'd like to open the chat room for Q&A if anybody has any additional questions. Um, I also want to show you how to save a workspace. I'll do that. Um, the best way to exit NinjaTrader 8 is to click this X in the top right-hand corner of the Control Center window. I'm definitely not telling you to click the Xs of all your other windows because those will not be saved if you do that first. So um, I'm going to right, uh, I'm sorry, left click in the top right-hand corner. And it's going to ask me, do I want to save this workspace untitled? And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and click yes. And then the next time I launch NinjaTrader 8, it's going to bring up the exact same um, workspace just as it appeared. So I'm going to go ahead and do that just to demonstrate. And it should appear exactly as we left it. Every, even the position of the windows, the instrument selected, everything. And there it is, chart to, to uh, order entry windows. I'm not connected. I'll go ahead and connect to the simulated data feed just so everything kind of looks exactly how it did. Our chart lost all of its fake historical data, but that's expected. Um, and that's about it. So um, going back to the slides here. Today we went through the different order types. We added a Superdome tool workspace and placed some trades. We uh, enabled Chart Trader on a chart and placed some trades using that. And um, we started the presentation by going over the basic entry window interface. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to invite you to join our Forex 101 event tomorrow to gain the understanding of the subtle but important differences in involved in trading spot Forex versus trading futures or equities. 
Um, and from all of us here at Ninja Trader, I wanted to say happy trading. And please let us know if you have any questions or concerns. We are happy to help. Um, oh, we do have a last question entered the room. Brandon, this was great, but he uses NT7. How can you get the same training for NT7? Great question. Go to our YouTube site, and um, there is a Ninja Trader 7 training list uh, playlist. So um, I'll try and find you that YouTube link right now. I'll paste it in the room. Here it is. Yeah, so head, head over to our YouTube page at this address and check out the playlist Ninja 7 training. Uh, Ninja Trader 7 training um, and you'll see the same order entry 101 um, play uh, video but just for Ninja Trader 7 you're welcome Brandon and then Jeff asked is there more info in explaining the use of the trend setter um, this is called the trend slider I'll go back to my screen share real quick it's it's this is all simulated fake data and it, it allows you to move the prices up and down so you can kind of learn different scenarios like let's say the market tanked on me and i wanted to work on stop losses you know if i'm in long positions and let's say the market had a spike so that's it's it's all your way of controlling the fake data that's what the trend slider is and it only appears when you're connected to the simulated data feed so if i go to connections and um, disconnect from the simulated data feed that trend slider disappears it's it's only appears when you're connected to fabricated fake simulated data so i hope that answers your question jeff that is all the time i have today for everybody so um thanks again for joining me and um hopefully we'll see you next week take care